everyone, welcome back to another video, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a rush from doors in Minecraft. So, let's get into it. Okay, the first thing, and this is extremely important, the first couple things I'm going to need you to do, you're going to need to take out a structure block and an armor stand, and you're going to need to place the structure block and set the, the Y offset to 1, the Y size to two, the X size to one, and the Z size to one, and preferably, although this is optional, turn on remove blocks. This won't actually cause it to remove blocks where you load the structure, and in fact it does the opposite, it makes it so that it won't remove blocks when you load the structure, which is important, but also optional, because if you make sure that there's never blocks at the start of a uh, of a room you can just have rush not generate on the door and i'll eventually get into why that's uh that's a thing but what i'm talking about like generating whatnot but you know so i'm going to need you to do now technically with both of these structures you could do them in any order but it would probably be better to follow along with my tutorial just so that you don't get lost but just know that you can do these two structures in order. So the first one, you're going to want to name literally anything you want. I'm just going to call it Rush because, you know. And place an armor stand. Put it in whatever, whatever position you want. But make sure to grab... I mean, you don't really have to do this. But it would make sense that you have like some definable aspect so that you can actually see it. Other than just some particles, if you decide to go through with that. I like to put a wither skeleton skull, but that's really it. So now what you need to do, you need to go here, and you need to type in this command. Tag at E, R equals 1, or C equals 1, that would work too. Type equals armor underscore stand. Add, and then you can name it whatever you want. This is the tag. This allows you to specifically point out this armor stand above any other armor stands. So instead of having a trouble defining which armor stand you are going to be uh, executing commands on, adding this tag, which I'm just going to call it rush, will allow you to pinpoint this one specifically. You will also want to name this, like an actual name, with a name tag, not with the slash tag command. Just something, if you, to note, if you want to start doing commands, make sure to know the difference between the name tag and the slash tag command. Slash tag command gives entities a certain tag that you can define them with, whereas a name tag will just name the entity something, it will appear above them, assuming they're not invisible, which is actually kind of why you want to do this. So, I'd recommend Raymond raming naming it rush so now you can see that this if you look at it will not actually appear once the commands are finished because this will be invisible so the naming of this is important later once you have that done you can just go ahead and hit save and then destroy it. the it the it the it so now name it anything else but keep all the settings, add another armor stand, position it however you like, and you can do whatever you want with this one. It literally does not matter. You can leave it with nothing. You can put, a, you, you, can give, you can give it a shulker box for some reason. I don't know why you'd want to do that. But you can really do whatever. And make sure to uh, do the same thing, except have the tag be anything else. So I'm going to call it rush node because rush works on a nodal system. And this is literally exactly what you're going to be doing. This is the map, by the way, that I have created just for this. So then you're going to hit save, or at least you should. You don't, you don't have to, but it would be advised. With the, with the rush node, you actually don't really have to make a structure, but it would just be easier. So then... The next thing you're going to need to do, take any block that you want and go to the beginning. You will need to 
put uh, whatever you call them blocks two blocks below or I guess one block one block would also work but I'd advise two blocks two blocks below uh, each key feature of your build so and what I mean by that is essentially the entrance and exits of each of the rooms so here is one entrance here is the other entrance and this will be important now you can also if you have a corner room like this you can also put one in the corner which you which you should do and then and then the exit now you can see you should have all of these little blocks below your build and this is important because now you need to go on top of each one of these blocks you need to type slash structure load rush node or whatever you named that structure and it should spawn it now this is important to note probably right now that that specifically won't work on java edition in fact a lot of these commands actually might not but maybe they will because of the new execute format on bedrock edition with when you turn on experiments which is what i'm going to be doing this with so if you want to follow this tutorial exactly make sure to go into your settings and turn on experiments for this world or the world that you're doing on java edition you'll probably have to use structure blocks and or, uh, or um just do everything manually unfortunately so you just want to put these on every single block once you're done, it should look something like this, where you have all of these armor stands just kind of sitting below your rooms. And that is good. That is the optimal setup that you need. Also, you might want to create the rooms first. That would be nice. I don't think it will work without rooms. At least create a floor, because you're going, you will need that. I'm like, you, you actually will need that. But now... All you'll need are just some command blocks, specifically repeating and maybe chained. Um, yeah. So the first thing you're going to do, you're going to create a command block. Repeat and always active. Unconditional. Name it whatever you want, or don't name it at all. I'm going to name this movement A. Or actually, no, movement 1. Movement 1A. Uh, I'm specifically naming it Movement 1A because, you, oh, you'll see later. But essentially what you want to do, remember the tag that you put on the, on the armor stand for the rush structure? That's going to come important now. So you want to execute as at E tag equals rush. That is very important. E tag equals rush at, at S run. This is important. And then you have to do TP at S, up arrow, up arrow, up arrow. So this now means that it will teleport one block forward. And then you want to do facing at E, tag equals rush node. So the tag you gave the second structure. And then C equals 1. C equals 1 will cause it to only target one of these entities. And it also means it will target the closest one of these entities, which is a side effect, I guess, of C. And never put true, only ever put false or nothing at the end. Uh, which those essentially mean um, whether it will de detect for blocks. And if there is a block in the way, then it won't run. So now it should say no targets match selector because you should not still have those up. And if you do, you might want to go catch them. Well, actually it won't be that difficult. It'll just be at the nearest rush node. But there's a couple other things. All of you who are on PC are lucky because this is going to be extremely easy for you after the first command block. But now, so movement 1B, what you're going to want to do is execute as at E, tag equals rush, or whatever tag you gave rush, at, at S, run, or don't, don't put run there, put if block, tilde, 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 which is direction, not direction, uh, position, 
planks, or whatever block you're using as the floor, whichever block you're using as the floor would work too. Just make sure that it's the block you're using as the floor, obviously. And I'm using spruce, so I'll do planks one, although I believe putting a data value here is optional, and I it's not even at all something you would do on Java Edition, so Java players just exclude that, and if you want it to just be all planks in general, you can also exclude this. And then put run. TP at S tilde tilde one tilde. This will also end up creating a bobbing effect, which is a little annoying, but if you don't want people to be able to just accidentally put their items onto the invisible armor stand, because you'd have to make it invisible, then it's pretty much necessary. And the reason why you have to do more of these is because sometimes the commands don't run fast enough to actually make sure that he will stay out of the floor. Sometimes he'll still manage to make it under. So what you now need to do, if you're on PC, you can hold control and then pick block and you'll just get this command and you'll be able to just um, place it again twice. But for everyone else, I want to do slash structure. Try to do slash structure because then the structure won't actually save if you leave. So it won't obstruct anything even though it shouldn't or whatever. Uh, it, it's just better because then you won't have to worry about an extra structure or whatever. So then you can do this and then command and then tilde tilde negative one tilde through tilde tilde negative one tilde. So that now means this is saved and now I can simply remove this, make it tilde 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 instead of tilde negative one tilde and then change save to load. And it will now load that there. And I can just do that again right here. But this... This now means it's just going to be easier for us to do this as a whole. So now you're going to want to change in the second one the actual coordinates that it's TPing up to 2 and the if block 1 on the y coordinate, which is the second tilde. And then on the third one... You just do the same thing, but again, three, and if block two. Oh, by the way, guys, um, if you're wondering why all these commands are here already, by the way, it's because I forgot about this until the end, and I'm just going to paste this section in the middle. But there's one more thing you also have to do on top of all of this, and it, it's very simple. But essentially, what you want to do is execute as at e tag equals rush. At, at s run tag at e r equals uh not not r equals uh dy equals negative three tag equals um rush node add past node, or just anything except for the last two things, and then what you want to do for the first movement is make sure it's also facing tag equals not, which is the exclamation mark, past node. So now movement is done, and if you just want it to just sprint at you for whatever reason, then I guess you're done here. But I don't want it to just sprint at you. So instead, we're going to add the killing commands. There are multiple ways you could go about this, technically. But I'm just going to do the simplest way. Which is it will just simply kill you in a radius. But it's still a bit more complicated. So, if you noticed these along the floor. These are actually closets. These blocks would simply make it a lot easier for closets to work. So, instead of kill, let's change this to hiding one. So what you want to do is execute as at E, or not at E, at A, because players and then at, at s not run if block tilde tilde negative one tilde 
it's stripped underscore spruce underscore log. I believe that is that is it. Okay. It didn't say like unknown uh, block or whatever. So it, it's still good. Run. Don't put the extra in there. Then you would do tag at s add hiding. This now means that if you are in a closet, it will give you the hiding tag and you will be unable to be killed by Rush, which you will see soon. So now, there's a second thing you must do. So if we do, remember pretty much all of these have to be com uh, complete. Repeat, not complete. Complete is not an option. And then always active, just for them to work. So then you want to do uh, hiding, hiding too. You, you again, don't have to name these. I'm, I just do it because it makes it a lot easier to look through to see what you what you might want to look for if you need to fix something. So then, what to do? Execute as at a at, at s. Now here you want to do unless. So what we're doing right here is we're making it so that if it detects you on spruce planks, since you're no matter what pretty much going to be forced onto the spruce planks, it will remove the tag. However, it is also useful to have an override block. I'll just say cobblestone. An override block like cobblestone that you can place wherever else you want so that you don't have to change the floor and instead can just change the underside of the floor. But you still won't have to overcrowd the floor if there aren't any of those but a lot of closets. So if you don't have any extra spots, you don't have to put cobblestone anywhere, everywhere, if there, if you also happen to have a lot of closets on that room. So this is helpful. So unless block tilde tilde, negative two tilde, because it's detecting under the floor, which is our, which the floor is already negative one, so under the floor would be negative two. Cobblestone. Then if block tilde tilde negative one tilde planks one. Run tag at s remove hiding. So just make sure that all of these are repeat and always active and that it doesn't say um syntax error or whatever which it shouldn't assuming you follow the tutorial so now uh this might be a little difficult to do if you're like me and already built all the rooms but you might want to pinpoint any other locations that you need to that rush wouldn't be able to see you at so that you can put your cobblestone or other blocks, just whatever there. So for me, this room almost entirely would be it because Rush in game kills you on line of sight. So he would see you. So if he's running through here, he would see you if you're within like these couple blocks. You'd just be out of range on other blocks, but whatever. So you'd want to go under the floor. So him still being able to kill you on these blocks means that you'll want to place these elsewhere. So this now means that if you are in the corners here, or since there is a bed right here for me, I can also put cobblestone blocks under the bed. Since the beds are actually hiding spots, even though you can't go under them in Minecraft, I'll still put the cobblestone blocks there. As long as you are under the bed somehow, or in these corners, you will no longer be killed by Rush. Something else that I just find funny doing is just imagining that Rush won't see you if you're just right next to the entrance and behind an object, so I'll put cobblestone there as well. So you'll just need to scout through the rooms and find any spots where Rush wouldn't be able to kill you. In this room, not only would there be that spot, but Rush cannot see you past, like, furniture as he's going through here. So you'd want to also put cobblestone 
under here. So one more thing you have to do with the hiding. I have no clue how I forgot to do this. But if you remember the override block, the cobblestone, yeah, well, there's uh, other things you're going to need to do. So I did make it so that it wouldn't remove the tag, the hiding tag, if you were on, if you were on cobblestone, even if you were on spruce planks. But I forgot to make it actually give you the hiding tag if you didn't have it in the first place. So we're going to do that now. So what we're going to have to do is execute as at a at, at s uh, if block tilde tilde negative two tilde cobblestone run tag at s add hiding. And that's all you need to do. So now that you have all of that, now we can make the killing command. Make sure it's repeat and always active, and I like to turn on previous output. Now, slash execute as at E, tag equals rush, at, at S, run, kill, at A, R equals seven, I do R equals 7. You can also do R equals 10. You can pretty much do anything from like 10 and under. Anything above that is a bit excessive. I'll just go with uh, 10 since my rooms are a little wide. So just so you can't hide in the corner. Now, this also happens to be where the naming thing comes into play. So if you want a custom death message, you can instead, but only on Bedrock Edition, Run the damage command. Damage at A, R equals 10, 20, entity, uh, entity, not entity, underscore attack, entity at S. So this will instantly, will still work exactly like the kill command unless they have resistance for whatever reason. And also make sure that 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 r equals 10 uh whether you're doing kill or damage make sure it also says tag equals exclamation mark for not and then um hiding not not hoding hiding i keep on misspelling things please excuse it but this now means that because it is specifically tying the entity damage to rush it will now play a custom death message, and I will show you that at the end of this video where I demonstrate Rush working with these commands. One extra note, the slash damage command does not seem to work in peaceful mode, so make sure that you're not on peaceful mode if you're using it. Now, by this point, you're for the most part done unless you now want special effects. So before you were done if you just wanted them to sprint at you for whatever reason. Now you're done if you just want to be minimalistic and don't really feel like adding anything else. But if you happen to want particles and sounds and other effects... Then here you go. So if you want particles, execute as at E, tag equals rush, at, at S, run particle, and then any particle you want here. I'm going to go with, I think it was balloon underscore gas underscore particle, although I'm unsure. Um, no, it wasn't, was it? I'll have to change that later, but it, it was probably something else. I'll just go with this for now. It was some kind of white particle, since I don't ever remember there being a black particle that actually looks good. And then make sure it's uh, tilde, tilde, one tilde, because you're executing at the head and not at the feet. Otherwise, the particles would just come off of the feet of the armor stand, which is obviously not favored. So for this, you will now want, what was it? Oh yeah, um, this was um, sound, okay. 
I'm I'm sorry guys, I'm just blanking a little here. Sound one. So I'm actually not gonna call this sound one, but rather far. Because if you ever notice, Rush makes different sounds when he's far away from you and when he's close to you. So what I'm going to do is execute as at e tag equals rush at at s run play sound this is a real command and it will play any sound for you including music i believe there is a play music command or something like that but it doesn't seem to work for me so if you do play sound excuse me I have no, I forgot if you have to put Minecraft in, uh, Minecraft colon in front of it, but if this doesn't work, then just do that and it should. Uh, what I mean by that is like this. But I would do mob.enderman.scream. And then there. This creates a, a sound that I find pretty much the most similar you can get. However, this also means that it will play in a radius, which doesn't work with far. So instead, you would want to do execute as at a at, at s run. I believe this works. Let me just check. Aha. I think there you... Okay, something you have to do, not as, at s... This will make sure to play it as at s. You can also just do at a and then remove the as in the execute command, but I'll just do at s. This means that as long as rush exists, it will play that sound. And if you only want it to play when you like actually are somewhere near rush, you can also do at a r equals 50, which is very, very far away. But that also means that you won't get annoyed by his screams if somebody's playing your map, if you're making a map, and you're just casually building over here. I'm just going to stick with that, though. So now, he also not happens to play a sound when you're close. So, execute as at E not type, tag equals rush, at, at s, run, play sound, at a, r equals, I'd go with r equals 10 for this, um, or I actually, I'd go with whatever radius you're killing a, a radius is, since I don't often hear this close sound of rush unless i'm hiding so if i die i don't really hear it for that long you can also go for a little a little further of a radius but then sometimes i feel like you'll just be able to hear him from too far away i'll just stick with 10 but then again any sound but i think it was the the one that i like to use was dragon got hurt or wait, mob.dragon.hurt, probably. I'll have to check it, but, you know. And then, like this. The tilde, tilde, tilde. So that should work, and okay. So, yet, yeah, um, I don't use this command often, so I don't quite remember. But, apparently, the r equals 10, or I guess the at a... Uh, the selector is just supposed to come after, you know, I, you know, I should have known that because we literally, literally just did this, but now it should work. And now you should hear him approaching you when he spawns in and when he's nearby. The final thing. And now this is even more optional because I find one of my friends is doing a map. I'm pretty much doing all the commands for him, uh, which I'm fine with. I don't really care that he's getting a lot of the credit. Uh, I just find, I just find commands fun, so I don't really care, but, and also I'm probably going to do one of these later anyways. 
but he even he didn't want this. However, Rush happens to vibrate your screen when he's nearby. Like, make your screen vibrate. You know what I mean. So, what you want to do, you, you want to make a command block, assuming you want every single detail of Rush. And you want to do execute as at E, tag equals Rush, at, at S, run, camera shake. Again, I don't use I use this command even less than play sound, so I might get the like the um, the order of the syntax wrong. But I believe it's at a and then you do r equals ten, which this this you would in fact do the like no matter what the radius of your kill because you literally cannot ever see the screen vibrate when you have died to rush, and then. I believe this is the intensity. Was it? I think you had to do add before. Hold on a second. Again, I don't use this command a lot, so I don't really know the exact syntax. But I do know that I have used it. Um, so intensity and then seconds. So the intensity, I just go with um, pretty much anything is fine. It all seems to work the same, at least for me. I'm gonna go with 0.5, or I guess 0 0.5, since suddenly just, since sometimes just 0.5 doesn't work, and then one. Well, this should mean that your screen will now shake when you're nearby, and if you want it to get even more intense if you're closer, you can then add another command that essentially does the exact same thing. And then you can just go in here and change up the intensity or if you're closer. And by this point, you're pretty much done, but there are still a couple final details, and that final detail is invisibility. I forgot about this at the beginning, and then just decided to save it till the end, because, I don't know. I don't know why I did, but I just did. But hopefully, most of you wanted invisibility, and hopefully most of you did not click off and then just go, Hey, why is me invisible? So, now, this is probably the most simple one uh, in recent commands that I'm showing you. Effect at E, tag equals rush, invisibility, one, zero, true. Make sure to put true at the end so you don't see the particles. And that should be it. And now, okay, now, you, now you'd want to have him spawn in, but I'd probably do that for a different video, since the way he spawns also happens to sometimes spawn another character, which I am not demonstrating here. So I'm not gonna make him, I'm not gonna do a tutorial for him spawning in this video. I might not even do one at all. It should be easy to figure out um, if you want, it to just be rush you just put a command block that tests for um dx dy dz something something or other and then it would have a a chain command block of which is set to conditional running off of it which would then summon rush or structure load rush at the end okay one last thing i keep on doing this but i keep on forgetting about stuff if you really want the optimal rush experience then you would also want him to remove lights so there are two commands you'll probably want for this and those would be i, just, I don't know i'm just going to call these light one and light two so depending on the light source that you're using excuse me Depending on the light source that you're using, you might want to have different blocks. So, for example, a sea lantern here would probably work uh, best turned off as a block of netherite. See, look. This block of netherite just looks like a sea lantern turned off. And what I'm going to do for the lanterns... A lantern probably just turned off looks like a chain. This is pretty much the closest you can get. But it's really just because of the fact that the lantern uh, hangs off of a chain. So you want to do is execute as at E, tag equals rush, 
at at s run fill negative 10 negative 10 i guess you don't really have to do tilde negative 10 you just do tilde negative 5 since he's not really going to be um n nothing's really going to be below him that far nothing's really going to be below him in general i'll just do tilde negative 2 and then tilde negative 10 again and then from there to tilde 10 i'll just do tilde 10 and then tilde 10 because of the fact that there's um light above him but then you but then you do chain zero replace lantern and now I also have torches scattered throughout, which are supposed to be like the side um, lamps that you see indoors. So you, for these, you do execute as at e tag equals rush at, at s run fill tilde negative 10, tilde negative 2, tilde negative 10, tilde 10, tilde 10, tilde 10, and fence 0 re place torch I believe it's fence it is indeed fence but here is the demonstration